Sukkot Shimini Atzeret, the Great Eighth Day, a prophetic typology of the rapture. As we delve into the prophetic significance of the middle of Sukkot in 2024, we uncover a profound correlation with the mid-tribulation rapture theory from our previous postings. Please review parts 1 and 2 of our mid-tribulation rapture theory, integrating the 144,000, the Gentile Bride, and cosmic phenomena into one for a better understanding. The Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkot, is celebrated for seven days. This feast is a reminder of God's power, provision, and presence. The middle of this feast occurs on October 20th, 2024, and resonates deeply with the concept of the mid-tribulation rapture theory I shared in previous videos, which occurs at the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week. Therefore, the Feast of Tabernacles holds profound implications for the Bride of Christ in relation to the Rapture, Second Coming, and Millennial Kingdom. During the middle of Sukkot, Jesus entered the temple to teach, which is a pivotal moment filled with significance. In John 7 verses 14 to 17, it states, Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. This moment reveals a powerful parallel between the middle of Sukkot and the mid-tribulation theory, where the bride meets Jesus in the air. Just as Jesus taught in the temple during this critical time, the rapture signifies the moment when the bride ascends to meet Christ, who is teaching and revealing his truths in the heavenly realm of the New Jerusalem. The act of Jesus' teaching in the temple signifies a deepening of spiritual insight and understanding for his followers. The middle of Sukkot can be seen as a divine invitation for the bride to engage more deeply with the teachings of Christ. As he imparts wisdom, the bride receives greater revelation about her identity, purpose, and the events that are to come. This teaching moment serves as preparation for the challenges ahead, equipping the bride with the spiritual knowledge necessary to navigate the trials of the tribulation. However, it is essential to recognize that as the bride experiences this spiritual breakthrough, she also faces intensified spiritual warfare. During this time of revelation and growth, Satan seeks to undermine her faith, sowing seeds of doubt and confusion. Ephesians 6 verse 12 reminds us, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The middle of Sukkot represents a critical juncture for the bride, as she is called to not only receive revelation but also to stand firm against the adversary's attacks. The spiritual insights gained during this time can fortify her against the enemy's schemes, empowering her to push through the trials and remain steadfast in faith. The temple setting symbolizes God's desire to dwell among His people. While Sukkot emphasizes the temporary booths, it also highlights God's presence among His people. The festival is a time of rejoicing and gratitude for the harvest and a celebration of God's faithfulness throughout the Israelites' journey in the wilderness. The temporary nature of the booths serves as a reminder that life is transient and that we need to depend on God for protection and provision at all times. In Leviticus 23 verse 43 we read, So that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. This verse reinforces the call to rely on Him during times of uncertainty. Just as the Israelites lived in temporary shelters, the bride is reminded of her earthly journey and dependence on God's grace. The middle of Sukkot serves as a prophetic foreshadowing of the rapture, where believers are called to ascend and meet Christ in a heavenly dwelling, reflecting the teaching that occurs in the temple, which symbolizes New Jerusalem, a permanent dwelling place. It is a home and not a temporary shelter. The connection between Sukkot and New Jerusalem reveals a beautiful duality. While the booths symbolize vulnerability and uncertainty, they also point toward the eternal home that God has promised. The temporary booths remind believers of their reliance on God during their earthly pilgrimage while anticipating the fulfillment of His promises in New Jerusalem. In alignment with the significance of the middle of Sukkot, the mid-tribulation rapture theory offers a narrative of divine intervention. 
As the world descends into turmoil, this period represents a critical transition for the faithful. The rapture signifies God's protection and the ultimate reunion of the bride with Christ, echoing the gathering of believers during Sukkot. In 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17, we are reminded of the promise. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This promise parallels the celebratory aspects of Sukkot, highlighting the joy and anticipation of meeting our Savior. As the bride prepares for her heavenly ascension, she must remain vigilant and anchored in faith, drawing strength from the joy of the Lord and the promises outlined in Scripture. The connection between the middle of Sukkot and the mid-tribulation rapture reinforces the need for readiness and spiritual awareness, reminding believers that their ultimate home is not of this world, but in New Jerusalem, where Jesus teaches. As the bride engages with the teachings of Jesus during this time, she will experience a heightened sense of spiritual insight and understanding. This revelation can lead to greater discernment in navigating the challenges of the tribulation. The lessons imparted by Christ in the temple serve as a divine preparation for the trials to come, empowering the bride to stand firm in her faith, discern truth from deception, and be equipped for the work of the kingdom. The seventh day of Sukkot represents the second coming of Christ, where he returns to establish his kingdom. In Zechariah 14 verse 4, we find the prophecy. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. This day is characterized by the culmination of God's plan and the final victory over sin and death. The celebration on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles is a time of great rejoicing and worship, similar to the anticipation of Christ's return. This day, often seen as a completion of the feast, foreshadows the restoration and fulfillment of God's promises. The joy experienced during Sukkot represents a foretaste of the joy believers will have at the second coming when Christ fully manifests His kingdom on earth. The transition from the seventh day to the great eighth day symbolizes the completion of God's redemptive work and the ushering in of a new era. Following the seven days of Sukkot, the great eighth day, Shemini Atzeret, carries profound significance, particularly as it relates to the millennial kingdom. This day symbolizes a new beginning a transition from the temporary to the eternal. Just as the eighth day follows the celebration of Sukkot, the millennial kingdom represents the fulfillment of God's promises, where Christ reigns and establishes His kingdom on earth. In Revelation 20 verses 4 to 6, we read about the reign of Christ during the millennial kingdom. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The eighth day serves as a prophetic foreshadowing of the ultimate restoration of creation and the renewal of all things. In this context, the millennial kingdom will be a time of peace, righteousness, and the full manifestation of God's presence among His people. It is a time when the bride will dwell in the fullness of God's glory, enjoying the blessings of His reign. I believe Sukkot serves as a typology and foreshadowing of Daniel's 70th week, highlighting both the immediate and the eschatological significance of these festivals. Just as Sukkot commemorates God's faithfulness in providing for His people in the wilderness, it also points to the future when God will once again demonstrate His provision and presence through the Messiah's reign. The seven days of Sukkot remind us of the journey through tribulation, while the eighth day symbolizes the culmination of that journey in the eternal kingdom. The prophetic implications of these two pivotal moments, the middle of Sukkot and the middle of the tribulation, serve as a profound call to preparedness for the bride. Both events remind believers of the urgency of spiritual growth and dependence on God's provision. Just as the Israelites celebrated God's faithfulness during Sukkot, the bride is called to rejoice in the assurance of Christ's return and the hope of eternal life. From John 7 verse 14, the Lord has shown that the middle of Sukkot, when Jesus went to the temple to teach, held prophetic implications and further supports the mid-tribulation rapture theory. The main message is still that the bride is to remain steadfast in her faith, 
actively engaging in spiritual preparation while trusting in God's ultimate plan for His people. Amen.